the Celtics Lab podcast, and it was, I don't know, an hour after your story about Jalen Brown dropped. And I was asked about it, and I said, listen, you know, if if anyone writes anything about the Celtics, the the sort of mantra among C's fans or talking heads over over decades at this point, over the last several years, has been, okay, but who wrote it? Who wrote it? And, you know, even if it was a, a very reliable national correspondent, you know, could have been Woj, could have been Shams, could have been Stein, could have been, you know, whomever, like you name it. It was always, yeah, but is, has Bullpet said anything about this yet? So when you wrote this article about Jalen Brown, which for anyone that didn't get a chance to see it on heavy.com, it's it's kind of a, you know, if this, then that sort of concept, you know, the, the headline was sources Celtics Jalen Brown could seek June divorce if team falters. And of course, the big line that caught people's attention, multiple sources have told heavy.com that absent the team getting its act together, which by the way, it has, you know, right now, but absent the team getting its act together and playing more to its potential, Brown could be the one to acknowledge that the mix isn't right and seek a move now. There are a number of different things about this that I think we could get into that I think are interesting, but just Overall, I mean, do you feel like in in your reporting and talking to the people that you have that anything in terms of unhappiness from Jalen Brown and his camp is imminent? No, I mean, that was the point is that, you know, I, I look in, in terms of presentation of the story, you know, have I thought about it a thousand times since it was posted? Sure. You know, I mean, the most important thing is getting your points across, getting them received properly. You know, it's 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 up to me to make sure it gets read properly. And, you know, there's some question here whether I did it properly or not. Um, the, the idea here, and, I, and again, started off with that Jalen Brown, this is what he wants to work here. But there have been frustrations uh, over the course of the year. And the reason I even got to this story is, you know, I'm talking to people across the league. Obviously, that's, that's basically the job. There's there are two phones sitting right there and mm -hmm. they, you know, and I make calls and they ring and that's basically the job, you know, I mean, and, and there are other people, a lot of other people around the league doing the same thing that I'm doing. Um, but when you're getting calls about Jalen Brown, you know, what kind of guy is he, how is he to deal with? Um, and then you say, okay, well, where's this coming from? And they say, well, there's a belief around the league that, uh, that was communicated to me that, you know, Jalen Brown might be available and then, okay, well further, okay. It might be available when, and it's, and what, it, what came back then was most likely if at all around the draft. Well, and so why are you calling now? Because maybe, you know, these are peep teams that, that would, that covet Jalen Brown that figure, Hey, look, maybe, maybe we should get in on this now or try to, or see what we're going to have to do. And in one case, a GM told me, Hey, you got to start preparing for these things, and because you have to be able to move fast if they if they show up, and um, so yeah, so it, it, that's that's where the you know these people weren't getting this idea out of nowhere, out of thin air. These these teams around the league, and upon further investigation, it was like yeah, there was a point where I think everyone will understand that everyone around the Celtics was terribly frustrated with this team and the way it was playing. You know, I mean, that that hero ball, the one on one stuff, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure on your shows, there were a thousand people, you know, uh, calling up to decry what was going on. And uh, so, yeah, that's, you know. That's the, the, that's the basic germ of it. I can get into yeah. it further, but go ahead, please. Well, I was going to say, I think, you know, to me, the most interesting angle, because you know, it's, uh, I, I think it's like, it's human nature, right? It's kind of common sense that, 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 you know, you could look at anybody in any walk of life and say, man, if like, if, if they're not happy, they may look for a different situation, right? Like at, putting it just at its, at its most like basic, truest form. But what's really interesting here is, you know, all the commentary over really the last couple of years surrounding the season, they've been up and down this roller coaster of you know, ride of, of, of health or COVID or, or not playing well, inconsistencies, all of it has always been 
you know, former players or, or media people or execs, like you got to split up the Jays, you know, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown can't coexist. You know, they're, they're redundant. They, they don't belong together. You know, there's a better way to build this team and, and on and on and on. This is what we've always heard. This is what people have said, but where it typically hasn't come from is, you know, one of these guys is upset and may want out. And it's not like it's this new concept at by any means in what is largely a, a player's run league. You know, you could think of a thousand examples in very recent history, whether it's, you know, Lillard right now in Portland, obviously Ben Simmons in, in Philadelphia, James Harden going back to Houston, you know, Kevin Durant not long ago, Kyrie Irving here. Like there, I mean, there are so many superstars, LeBron even, like guys that are unhappy that want to change the scenery but we've never really talked about Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown that way just because you know really in, un, until now there there haven't been those little those little tidbits those little crumbs of information that say you know what like this this is a path even though these guys are under contract one of them may want to take sooner than later I, I guess I would just wonder you know what's your view of of how well these guys can coexist and take this team where they want it to be and where the team wants it to be versus one of them, even at a young age. And again, being under contract still could get a little fed up and say, you know what? I, I do have some power despite having a contract and I'm going to exercise it. Look, I think that these two guys, a should want to stay together and B should flourish together and C the fact that they haven't yet is is mind-boggling to me and trust me it's mind-boggling to people around the celtics as well i mean uh i go back to the conference finals in 2018 game seven the celtics have the cavaliers on the garden floor the the cavaliers uh were looking they i don't think they wanted to go and face golden state because they knew what was going to happen <laughs> and interestingly as I've written a, a bunch before, uh, that the, the Warriors were rooting hard for the Cavaliers that day. You know, and this is the Celtic team without Gordon Hayward, who's been injured the entire year since game one, mm-hmm. without Kyrie Irving, who was out for the year at that point. The, the, the Warriors did not want to face those Celtics. They were much more uh, of a threat to them as in their eyes than were the Cavaliers. And the Celtics botched up that game by, and again, I'll say it, it's not guys being jerks. It's guys saying, hey, give me the ball. I'll go make a play. I'll take responsibility. I'll go do this. And that just, it threw the team off. It's, it, it killed them. And it, it's killed them in, at different points ever since that. You look at playoffs and, you know, a couple of years ago, the conference finals, you know, did they get caught in the, a little bit of hero ball? Well, everyone around the team, their coach was saying, you know, so the this from Brad now to Ime to uh, the people around in the, the organization before they, the other coaches, they've been trying to get these guys to play more team ball and not just them, everyone, you know, not just those two guys, but understanding the value to them. And you see when they play the right way, how well it works which makes it crazy that they don't do it all the time like they're doing it now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm not one of those that says, you know, uh, Jason Tatum, he's just pounding the ball. This is crazy. You know, he's got to give the ball up. If I'm the Celtics, I want the ball in Jason Tatum's hands as much as possible, but I want it in his hands after he's passed and cut and in a position to catch the ball and finish a play with a dribble or two, maybe, but catch and shoot, you know, as a finisher, both these guys. And again, this is stuff I've written for the Herald over the years and, you know, uh, tweeting and it's just, it's crazy. I think, I think you'd agree when you see how well they can play when they play that kind of basketball, it's crazy to think, why don't they do it all the time? As it was put to me by a Celtic person, there's not a player on this team that hasn't expressed his frustration at some point this year. Okay. And if you're talking about spinning your wheels, you know, there it is. But with regard to the two main pieces, I think, you know, they've realized all along and they've talked all along about, I mean, you remember Jalen Brown coming out and saying he has to, you know, find out how to work. uh, He and Jason have to figure out how to work better together. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think there's been a commitment with regard to that. You know, how long that holds is important. But I think um, to, to what you're saying about the frustration and all that, and it, it, I probably should have tried better to frame the story this way, because this is the point I was trying to get across, is that there is an urgency to what's happening right now, okay? That these guys, I, these guys want to be here and want to be Boston Celtics, and they're going to watch Kevin Garnett's number get retired, and they want to have that kind of success and be attached to a premier franchise in the, the, in the sport they play. But, you know, if it's not going to work, they don't want to be, you know, no one wants to be stuck in this situation, particularly, you know, ownership. You know, mm -hmm. they, it's, it's, pay, patience is not going to be strong if this team isn't showing signs, okay? Uh, this ownership didn't get to be this ownership. This franchise didn't get to be this franchise by saying, yeah, we'll just kind of roll along with this here. They make moves. They don't just sit tight if things aren't going the way that they want. And the definition of success in Boston is, is quite different than the definition of success in a lot of other NBA cities.